Hey guys, welcome to the Full Earth Workshop. My name is Doug and this is my son Landon. Hey everybody. And uh, we have seen a great movie that we want to share a little clip with you. It's called T-34 and it's a, what, a Russian made movie? Yeah, it's a Russian made movie. It's dubbed in English. I think it's on Amazon Prime. Yeah. Uh, pretty good. It's got great uh, visuals. If you like war movies and you like tanks like us, you <laughs> like it. Anyway, we loved it. We're going to show you a clip here. And then afterward, Landon has been brewing up a T-34 of his own. It's a Tamiya kit. Oh, yeah. Which one? T-3485. Yeah. We're going to check that out right after this. Поползли, як воши от керосину. Okay, later, let's take a look at this model. This is a Tamiya T3485. So this is one of the later T34 iterations that you'll see. So fill us in a little bit on the history of this tank. So the T3485 in general is considered to be one of the better versions of the T34 tank that you see for a bunch of reasons. First, it's got a larger cannon. So it's more capable of dealing with larger German tanks at further ranges. But one of the big things that really increased the effectiveness of this tank was having a fifth crew member. In the earlier T-34 models, you had a different suspension system, which took up a lot of interior space. I think it was the Christie suspension. That only allowed for four crew members, so the commander had to act as the loader and the commander. With this iteration, you have a larger turret. Uh, that suspension is replaced with torsion bar suspension, allowing for a full five-man crew. So the commander is now dedicated to commanding his tanks and possibly his tank platoon. This created a much better tank environment for the crew to do a good job. Now, I guess sloping, this was one of the first tanks that had that sloping uh, fascia in the front, correct? Well, not necessarily. You have a lot of World War I tanks, like the FT-1, I think is what it's called, or FT-2. It had sloped armor. A lot of people think of that, but truthfully, this is one of the first tanks that was made in mass production that has sloped armor. I mean, you see the Sherman, that was made around the same time. It had sloped armor. Um, a lot of people think, oh, the Germans didn't understand sloped armor, and it's not necessarily the problem of not understanding it, it's the problem of volumetrics. Now, one of the stories I heard that the Germans were not impressed at all by the Sherman when they first saw its first iteration of it, but when they saw the T-34, they were very impressed. Yes, well, if you think about Operation Barbarossa, this occurred in the early portions of the war, and the Germans still had, you know, the Panzer III, Panzer IV prior to their later war iterations, and they had smaller 37 millimeter cannons on the Panzer III, and you, you had a small 50 millimeter cannon on the Panzer IV, if I'm thinking correctly. And those had a harder, dif difficult time dealing with T-34s. You know, a lot of the design traits that you see in the in the early T-34s are reflected in the Panther. They have sloped oh. armor. That is kind of how it affected German tank design. The German tanks were still able to to deal with these pretty much at the beginning of the war. However, you see the Tiger and the Panther really coming to shine. Uh, not necessarily Tiger, but the Tiger II, um, from some of the traits that they learned from these tanks, wider tracks, a longer profile, things like that. So let's talk about the construction of it. What part is cast and then what part is actually put together from, from, from sheets yeah. and welding? So the turret was a cast turret. Um, these change based on which factory you're in, but a lot of parts of the tank, like you can see the front glacius there, um, that was actually, I think it was machined and then welded together. A lot of the lower hole is, is welded. Uh, but you can see the turret from the casting detail that it was casted. Casting actually looks a bit primitive compared to yes. contemporary. Yes, and so Russians, what's kind of cool about their tank designs when it comes to model making is that a lot of times it was crude. It wasn't necessarily pretty. The Germans spent a lot of time on making their welds, you know, really beautiful in a lot of ways and really try to perfect things, but it took longer. And the Russians were just like, hey, man, we just got to get as many tanks as we can out there. Um, and you look at the end of the war, and I think the Russians had something like a million tanks. Or, that sounds obscene, but it was a lot of tanks. Um, and so they just kind of throw these things together. 
And if you look at some of the, the old archives, these tanks were only expected to survive something like 100 hours. And so they didn't put a lot of effort into making them the prettiest things in the world because they figured, well, if a tank crew loses their tank, they'll just get another one. So there really wasn't the same value of life? Is that fair? Uh, I don't know if that's necessarily fair. Um, you do see uh, quality of life improvements from the earlier T-34s and these T-34s. For instance, the driver and the earlier T-34, if he didn't watch his feet, he could get his feet caught in the transmission or they didn't have a uh, turret box so that the crew had a place to stand in the earlier uh, T-34s. If you got your foot caught on some of the stowage uh, bays, you could have you know, ripped your foot off if the turret was turning, so. Well, I love the tank. Thanks for sharing it with us. And, sure, uh, I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the view. Yeah, well, we'll have you back real soon. Thank Monday. you.